Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is while you're watching this. And in today's review, we're going to be looking at an RI Profile B helmet. And uh, also having a look at an older version, the Chaser, and a couple of comparisons between the two. So we'll start off with the, the modern one. Uh, the other one I don't wear anymore, it's well over 10 years old now. I keep it because it's one that I've did a lot of track stuff on, so it's got some memories inside it. Anyway, looking at the profile, it's a typical Arai. It's well built, it's comfortable. I've obviously got an Arai shaped head, so I wear Arai helmets when I couldn't afford them. We'll come on to that in a bit. And it has all the usual features of an Arai. You don't get flip-ups. Arai have said they're not going to make flip-ups. Uh, never's a long time, but uh, they've stuck to it so far. The securing mechanism is a uh, double D, as you can just about see here. First helmet I ever had had one of these, slightly fiddly till you get used to it, then it's dead easy. Also has a clip, you can hopefully see there, the, the red press stud that would change the loose end of the strap, stop it flapping about. Uh, when I started riding in 86, they didn't have these, so if you didn't tuck it up in the side of your helmet, it rattled around and uh, got annoying after about three or four miles. So uh, yeah, you also managed to do something with the end of your uh, helmet strap. They do of course come with lots of vents. We have a chin vent here, a couple on the top for cooling the top of your head and of course the brow vents. You can't see them very well on this visor, but here's one I prepared earlier and you can see the two black brow vents. They're slightly fiddly to use, especially in thicker gloves, but again, it's just in case of getting used to it, you can just flick them down, keep your head nice and cool. There aren't any adjustable vents on the back. They um, are permanently open, but that's okay, the airflow's going backwards. Hopefully the rain's not catching you up from behind. Uh, despite what people have said about my riding, I've yet to be hit, hit on the back of the head by a fly, unless I'm looking behind to see where Jim is. The visor locks in, which is something a feature on the allies that I've had. Um, it's a bit fiddly this one, you have to push down quite hard and then click over. You've probably heard the second click there. I'll just uh, demonstrate again. So you push the top of the visor down, you get the first click, you still get quite a bit of air up under here. Then for uh, obviously track sort of stuff, you pull it over and back. And you can just about see here, hopefully, that there's a, a little black clip that actually goes inside the visor. To release, you push down on the clip, and you can see that it's just popped it out. And here's the clear visor again. So you can see here the actual uh, hole that the lock goes into. When it comes to changing visors on these, obviously I've got the dark one on here because I needed the clear one for showing a few things. It's a slightly fiddly. You have to take the side pods off first by pushing the clip there. Then you push it up again and lift the visor down. And what this is doing, it's this red spot here and this gold rivet. As you push up and push the visor down, it lines up on the red spot and you can take the visor off. Putting it back on in the Zotana Haynes manual is the reverse of disassembly. So you click the visor back in, then lift up, and you get a nice satisfying click as it goes back in. And there you can see the visor now is moving along this way rather than upwards towards the red dot. Then you put the side pod back on. You have some little latching points on the inside, white on white, it's as bad as black on black for contrast, and you put the top one over the plastic piece here, then just simply click. Again, a nice reassuring click and everything's back in place. You might wonder why I've brought the tracer into the garage as well to have a look at. There are some slight differences on this, and I actually prefer this design of helmet to the newer one. So first of all, you've got the same chin. Let's move this up a bit so you can see the light. The brow vents, uh, top vent as well. And also on the back, you've got an adjustable exhaust vent as well. 
Um, there are two small fixed vents at the bottom that are always open. The locking mechanism on the visor, I prefer this one because you actually have to lock the visor um, in the down position and it's a lot easier to just flick up with your thumb like so. This will actually lock the visor so it can't be flicked up but um, you don't actually have to force it down over something to get it to lock in to stop the slight draft going up the front of the visor. The other thing I like about this is the way the visors come off. You have a small piece here and a little lever, just flick that upwards and out your visor comes. I find this far easier to use than the taking the pod off one. You can see it's a bit clear unfortunately so you can't see too well but the visor has actually released. And uh, yes, it's dead easy to get back in as well. Um, quite a nice little design this one. I, I do prefer it over the, the one where you take the side pods off because everything that needs to come off, such as side pods, is something that over time will wear if you change visors regularly. But what our eyes don't have is an internal flip down visor, at least on, not on these models or any of the other ones I've seen. So you do need a darker visor if you're riding in bright sunlight. I would only really use these on tracks because if I'm out on the road I never know when I'm going to be going under trees or under a bridge or a tunnel. You can flick it up but then you're getting all the flies and muck in your eyes or in my case on your glasses. Speaking of glasses... With the Arite on, you'll feel that there's um, quite a lot of space around your ears. That's because it's obviously built for intercoms and things like that. And also, getting glasses on isn't a problem. They fit over the top of your ears and into the space, so getting glasses on and off is uh, easy. I'd still prefer to use a flip-up than uh, one of these for sort of pootling about, biding um, anywhere. If I gone out somewhere and go to the shops on the way back or going to fill up, they're, it's, uh, they're, they're more comfortable if you're going in wearing a flip up than wearing an ally. But these for long distance and high speed riding such on a track as on a track are a, a lot quieter than a flip up and also if you're doing track days in the UK you're going to have to have an ACU gold helmet. Um, there's only one flip up I've ever had that's had one of these. The reason that they have to have these is that they need to be able to get the helmet off your head without lifting a chin bar. Um, a lot of times I, um, when I did my race licence, the chap at the ACU said the impact can either grind off the mechanism or damage the mechanism so they can't lift the chin bar up and out of the way to get the helmet off the top of your bonds. So hence no ACU gold um, standard helmets in uh, flip ups at least none that I know of if you do know of them comment section down below It'd be interesting to see what's out there this is a large size to go with my big head and the weight of this is 1500 grams plus or minus 50 you might think it's saving a lot over a flip up but my Schubert C5 flip up is 1660 plus or minus 50 grams I love our eye helmets they fit my head they're light they're very well ventilated and I would certainly recommend these if they're the right fit for your head over some of the other brands. But then again, uh, I use it. It's what I'm used to, it's what I like, so there will be other opinions out there. The quality of these is very high, and unfortunately as is the price. They're not that much more expensive to a comparable um, non-carbon fibre helmet, but um, yeah, in my opinion it is worth it. The one thing is though, if you see them online for 100 quid, they're not going to be our eyes, they're going to be cheap knockoffs and they're going to be dangerous for you. They won't uh, help out in a crash. That's it for my review of solid face helmets. Um, I don't own any open face ones, um, I only ever used them for trials, uh, I wouldn't wear one on the road. And uh, I'll see you in the next review.